you know, I cannot get out of the basement. Please, someone save me. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me go. Yeah, well, you know, Tarkov is still a game, and therefore you're still going to be trapped for for eternity. It's the bargain <laughs> yeah. you struck. It was in the terms of conditions. You never escape Tarkov. <laughs> yeah. <it's true. laughs> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Bite Marks channel. We are doing some very interesting content today. I am Emilio, pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined by Miles. Say hello, Miles. Hi, my name is Miles, but you can call me Largely Unemployed. I run a uh, gaming YouTube channel. Wow, how original. I'm <laughs> under the name Largely Unemployed. Links will be in the description for all the yes. good things. Yes, and uh, for those of you who are regulars, uh, Miles is definitely a, a frequent guest on this channel in terms of streaming. Um, you know, I cannot get out of the basement. Please, someone save me. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me go. Yeah, well, you know, Tarkov is still a game, and therefore you're still going to be trapped for, for eternity. It's the bargain <laughs> yeah. you struck. It was in the terms of conditions. You never escape Tarkov. <laughs> yeah. <it's> true. <laughs> uh, that will be for another stream, probably. Um, but today we're going to be doing some very unusual content, especially for this channel. So for those of you who don't know, uh, it might have come up in streams, but Miles and I are both martial artists myself yes, a current sir. martial artist and miles is his current fixation is rock climbing <laughs> yeah I've, I've pivoted but um it's <laughs> i used to do mixed martial arts and then i started i got really into bohurt mm -hmm. which is uh, armored combat uh with like medieval weapons yeah for the for the audience at home um i am a practitioner of what's called hema which is historical european martial arts and miles is a practitioner of, of bohurt and the distinction mm -hmm. is basically just that in bohurt you're fighting in armor um, and you tend to do a lot of group fighting, uh, yes. whereas Hema tends to focus on being unarmored and fighting more one-on-one -on -one type dueling. Yes, and yeah. and the, the focus in Bohurt is more on endurance, strength, and aggression. Uh, sort of, it's like a you know you don't have points. It's more of a uh, you got sixty seconds in the ring, first one to go down or the last one standing wins kind of thing. Yeah, it's um, a and then, yeah, it's a very different type of experience, but it's still drawing from the same fundamental pool of absolutely sort of sword uh, martial arts. You know, there is there's there are some overlaps certainly. We were gathered here because I saw a very unusual trailer, and I thought it would be interesting to talk about from the perspective of two relatively experienced martial artists. I've been doing this like seven plus years now, and. Miles, how long? Six and a half for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know. I, I think I can say I, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, The Elder Scrolls Online is an MMO RPG developed in the Elder Scrolls universe. I am not an Elder Scrolls fan. Of a huge note, Miles, are you big into the series? Played Skyrim all 17 times it was released, but um, other than that, I can't say I've really gotten deep. No. Yeah, that is another part of like the uh, license agreement that you didn't read. <laughs> that if you yes, play Skyrim yeah. once, you have to play it forever. <laughs> um, you got to get the platinum expanded deluxe Steam edition. That's yeah, the, that's the real. That's when it really shines. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm personally a big fan of Oblivion, but I'm not a huge fan of Bethesda games. But you know, I've played them. Um, what we really need is for Callum to get on here. So if you guys would like us to do a third, uh, a third, a second edition of this video with Callum, but talking more about lore stuff, then by all means, let us know in the comments below. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through the, the video and that we're going to break it down in terms of things that we like and things that we dislike, because I, I would agree, we were talking about this earlier, that there's actually quite a lot here that is very interesting uh, and very different from the standard stuff that you tend to see in fantasy video games, uh, trailers at least. Um, so we'll be back uh, right after the video plays.
two, one. And we're back. What an interesting trailer. So yeah, I energetic. Yeah, so right off the bat, I think it starts in a way that is very exciting. Um, this particular trailer takes place in a place called High Isle, which, if you know your Elder Scrolls lore, is where all the Bretons are. Um, now, I don't want to get too deep into the rabbit hole on Elder Scrolls lore, but the Bretons are people who are, technically speaking, they were bred into existence because of slavery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the Bretons were humans that were subjugated by elves, and for whatever reason, the elves decided that elven lords took lots of human concubines and made a bunch of half-elves, basically. And after enough time, they, they basically became their own stable human population. And the Bretons are more magical than baseline humans. So if you, if you play like a Breton in Skyrim or whatever, you, you tend to play a more magical character. They're not like Nords or Imper Imperials. But there are loads of crazy implications about what I've just said in, in terms of... Yeah, no, that's pretty dark. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, you can see the architecture, um, you know, in terms of like the way that the very buildings look. Fronts. It's very medieval. Yeah, it's, the Bretons, yeah. you know, Breton and, and, and so on. So it's very medieval France inspired. Right now, um, what we're seeing is essentially the... Um, introduction of the main character uh main enemy i think it's called the lord ascendant or the high ascendant who is our delightful fellow uh in the plate armor who you will see, see. in a second um but let's go back just a second we can see some other interesting things just in terms of like what's going on now there one criticism that i will levy is that i think one problem in fantasy video games is that armor designs tend to be not very Th there's like a problem if you get my meaning where it's like everyone can have armor that isn't necessarily distinctive you know like in real life in various wars and things like that a lot of the armor looked the same uh people had to rely on other things to make sure that they you know could what's be dis fascinating distinguished about that so that that's true to a point but not so most armor was painted mm -hmm. this is something that doesn't really come up in modern media but armor was very brightly painted um with your house colors it was uh, Sometimes people would wear a tabard, like uh, if you couldn't afford full plate armor, especially in the earlier periods, mm -hmm. and that would have your lord's house colors. Mm -hmm. For foot soldiers and men-at-arms, that was quite common. But for nobles, their armor was painted. It was bright colors, you know, yellow, red, pink, blue, um, whatever was available, really. Purple was obviously very rare because the <laughs> dye was rare. Yeah. But the, um, the armor did not, it was not polished steel, not often. Oh, um, awesome. And that's because they couldn't, they didn't have enough chrome content in the steel to make it stainless. So it, the armor was rusty, uh, and the paint was a good rust preventative. Yeah, um, well, so most armor was not polished plate. It was it or it was either encased in leather, or it was very very like decorated, that, uh, which I think is beautiful. Yeah, that's interesting because I think um, you know there is a certain like uh, after you after you reach the high Middle Ages. So in in the Renaissance, you have, and actually probably in the early modern period, you have a fixation on the development of huge armies and mass production and things like that yes. and so lots of armor just tends to be painted black um yes. but if you're uh in a feudal society where um your status as a person is not only purely uh you know your bank account it's literally you know how much stuff you can afford to wear uh, i think yeah. it's definitely the case that you'll have people who will go to great lengths to get you know like for example if you see uh things like uh, uh mosaics and things like that in like uh in uh, what's it, uh, Constantinople or Istanbul, you'll see that there's a great tendency to have very vibrantly decorated armor. Um, you know, yes. gold and uh, other precious like items are also included. Um, so yeah, that that. So just looking in the trailer, you know, it's it's a bit tricky to kind of tell. Like in especially in the background here, um, in the lower half of the the middle of the yeah, screen, yeah, we don't it's see like, much of the other characters, do we? Yeah, and then of course there's that explosion. Um, and then we're well, introduced. Just... Yep. If we go back to the initial scene, I can I can sort of vaguely date this. There's not all that much male present in that initial street fight scene, as in like just regular plain male who books and whatnot. Yeah. So what we're looking at, I think, probably is more 14th century armor. Um, you know, you've got pe lots of pieces of plate steel with, um, you know, they've 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 been combined with a, uh, uh, you know, sort of a, a breastplate or a mm -hmm. or a sort of a, a leather. I'm forgetting the word for it now. <laughs> the one where you've got the segmented plates underneath a leather covering. Uh, that seems to be the... I mean, everyone's oh, got a brigandine. Sort of fairly substantial, a brigandine, thank you. That's literally the one I used to fight in. I, I'm blank. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can see everyone's sort of got fairly substantial helmets if they're wearing helmets at all. I mean, obviously, yeah, we've got hoods here, and I think that's a costuming thing. More yeah, than anything for else. sure, yeah. Um, but the, 
the you know there's not the legs aren't particularly protected again i think that's costuming to make them distinctive but the, uh, the soldiers that are wearing armor are not wearing only male mm -hmm. and yeah. that implies that we're in the 14th century maybe yeah. early 15th yeah male, which would have painted which would have painted armor male male armor is uh basically the most prevalent type of armor until like the widespread adoption of basically cheap uh, accessible you know plate armor but yeah it yeah. is one of the things that kind of has to be talked about is that um elder scrolls draws on a variety of different influences like in uh skyrim you have the nords who are uh nordic inspired and therefore they kind of have superfluous fur everywhere and things like that yeah and, and got, the black leather and uh, yeah and, and, and then yeah. you've got the imperials who are wearing roman-esque gear but like you know, relatively speaking, we're, we're we're talking a very different sort of like cultural like background. So, you, you know, it, it it's a bit of a mishmash. You know, the Argonians don't wear armor like we would think of armor, and so on and so forth. Uh, That's fine. I mean, it takes some artistic license with it, right? I'm just sort of thinking about the like what I'm wondering where the inspiration came from, like which source yeah. material they were working with, and I think it probably they were looking at a lot of um, plated up, at least yeah. for this, this this scene anyway. Yeah, well, well, we'll get into it, but I, I think that is a good point to, to, to bring up. So the main crux of this trailer uh, involves three characters fighting each other, or four characters. We have three heroes who have been used in Elder Scrolls. I'll just pause here. Uh, these are three characters who have been used frequently in all of their other trailers. So they've been built upon... Um, from as like a Elder Scrolls Online cinematic universe. Uh, for our purposes, okay. we're just going to call them uh, the the barbarian, the uh, maybe ranger or rogue, and uh, the mage, which is okay. from the right to the left. So the guy who's very big, but the that guy is meant to be a Nord, right? Clearly the mage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he screams that, mage. That's yeah. a spell casting <laughs> stick. <laughs> Yeah, so that guy is the, the Nord, who is the barbarian archetype, and then there's a guy in the middle who is wearing a hood, and, you know, again, like, we, we, before we, we, we talk about the other guy, the, their opponent, you know, his armor kind of makes no sense. Um, no, he no, it has, doesn't make a lot of sense. He has a pauldron, you know, superfluous... On top of his pauldron. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he has a pauldron on top of his pauldron that is secured, which what looks like a bunch of leather straps, right? Yes. Not exactly the safest way to, to pin it. But it also, that poultron has two protrusions, like two additional plates that are, mm -hmm. one of which would basically completely block his vision on the left side, which, you know, is not exactly good for a character who's supposed to be super agile and super, you know, maybe that's why he's not wearing a helmet. No, it um, doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Um, but, and also those, I mean, those are, those are quite a common sight in, uh, in in medieval stuff, and what people don't understand, uh, sorry, medieval media, but what what people don't understand is that that's jousting armor. Yeah, that's to stop the lance from bouncing into your neck, right? It's it, it's completely useless on foot because the second you raise your arm above your shoulder, you're going to be pushing that thing into your ear. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's 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 going to limit your movement like you can't believe. Like it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, pauldrons like that did exist, but it was very much tournament or jousting yeah. armor. There's very, it was meant for mounted combat. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very specific use case. You know, you see sometimes with like crazy massive helmets, where invariably helmets like those did exist, but they were only used by tournament knights in like either jousts or maybe tournament melees, where it doesn't yes. quite so matter how much you know visibility they have or how much mobility they have. The target is right in front of them. Uh, if you're actually trying to fight, that's you know it's not going to be good. Obviously, the Nord has a horned helmet because we're never going to escape the idea that Vikings had horned horn helmets in media. Um, just yes, no, that, that that one's ingrained. I think yeah. the the mage or the elf. I guess it's like archetypal again. You know, one of the things that the Elder Scrolls does is it does play on like very classic fantasy tropes. And the idea that like oh we have a human barbarian. I, I think the guy in the middle is also a human. But the Nords are kind of like, look at how tall he is in comparison to the other people. The Nords are kind of like a... He's a big guy. He's yeah. a big guy. I mean, have you ever seen a Danish person? They're gigantic. So that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's fair, right? Like, well, I, I've seen a Dutch person and they're very tall. So oh, I no, dude, I've had a Danish guy swing a, a mace at my head. And I'll tell you right now, he was about that size as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you want to go up against, believe me. I, I love how his helmet has an, like a unnecessary protrusion for his beard. When it projects yes, in the yeah, side yeah, as well. Gotta, it's all about the drip <laughs> yeah. on that one. <laughs> for um, sure. Yeah. The elf, again, this is another problem, you know, problematic depiction in a standard. She's got a pauldron, you know, metal metal stuff, but 
like a little piece of metal on her torso and the rest of her torso is completely exposed, you know? Yes, uh, yeah, well, no, it's pointless. It's, well, it's cosmetic. What would be the point of wearing metal to just protect your lower rib cage, but not like your upper, you know, upper No, part? it makes no... I mean, that's, it's to make her boobs <laughs> stand out more. Like, it's, it's literally... Look at the curves on it. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's pretty transparently... Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, a metal, it's a metal corset, basically. Yeah. And then the rogue... Now, the rogue's armor... This is something I've noticed with the other knight. When we move forward, we'll see it again. The armor in this uh, style that they've built up around here is all segmented. Mm -hmm. even her her arm armor we'll see later has lots of segments on it now that makes a lot of sense for articulation right yeah but right now where his armor breaks i don't think he's going to be articulating his solar plexus that's a that's a solid piece <laughs> yeah. of cartilage right yeah. it needs to be like about i don't know three inches lower to mm -hmm. be of any use right now all that's doing is allowing a, a knife to slip through so yeah. i think what we see here is that you know the artists have seen um the idea behind like segmented plates and they weren't ever really done like this that i know of. yeah um, but they haven't really understood what the purpose is. Of the and that's, it does look very cool. Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Right? I love the style, but it is it is not particularly functional. I think it would actually be a bit annoying because mm -hmm. you'd guide you'd be guiding stabs upwards or downwards into that slot. Yeah, you know, if they scraped. I also like, think it'd probably not... move a lot, so maybe not the best thing for a stealth character to have. That, that... I, I, I would assume it's I would assume it's like sewn into the jacket he's wearing. At the at underneath, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it would be completely pointless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be very loud. I, <laughs> it's interesting, you know, that you bring up segmentations. I also have loads of problems with excessive segmentations in uh, in media. I feel like one one way that like it's a cheat basically because it makes armor look visually interesting. If they're in, in just in yes. terms of like yes. pure eye description, you yeah. you have something that's like lots of different. Um, no, like, I mean, it, it, it does exist in certain places. Like, I mean, on the upper arm, you need a lot of segment articulation. Yeah, uh, on the thighs, they're... you need a lot of articulation. On the elbows, obviously, mm -hmm. the knees. Um, but what you'll find is as armor became increasingly complex, right, they would have more and more uh, segments in those joints, or on the cops is what they're called. Mm -hmm. And the it's like the elbows and the knees specifically. But then they became increasingly more prone to jamming and seizing and rusting and all of these other issues. and uh, armor sort of phased out by firearms before this was ever really rectified, but it's it's in my experience having fought in twelfth, thir thirteenth, and fourteenth century armor. I really prefer the thirteenth century stuff, which is it uses single floating plates, mm -hmm. which are because they don't they can't, you can't see a single floating plate. You yeah. know, you've got you've got a, a big piece of metal on top that rests on your thigh, a big piece of metal that comes up from your greave, and suspended between the two is a floating plate of steel that protects your kneecap. Mm -hmm. And you can move around in there, and it's not exactly perfectly protective because it's not you can't you know the back of the leg is always going to be exposed. Yeah, yeah you, you can't fully it is, it is significantly more mobile, and if it gets dented, you're not you you can still use your leg. Uh -huh. You know, like yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that if plate armor gets moved out of shape, then it stays out of shape. Oh, it it seizes. Oh yeah, it stays there. You're not you you got to take it off yeah. if you want to if you want to um, keep moving. My my personal preferences for armor are like I really like cataphracty armor, cataphracti armor. So if you see like a guy covered head to tail in like scale armor, uh, yeah. which is all fully articulated, very expensive to make, but very shiny. I personally quite like that type of armor. Um, That's more of the sort of like Eastern Anatolia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Byzantine stuff. Uh, I, yes. I really like that. Um, but anyway, let's continue. So we have our heroes who are in opposition to our lovely fellow who is still steaming from the magic blast. That oh, been... and there it is. Look at that. His breastplate is segmented. There's a <laughs> big old separation right down the middle. It looks cool, but it makes no sense, man. <laughs> like, just... Yeah. yeah those, those, would, those would be... Those would be so now, I've also made plate armor, right? Mm -hmm. um, as part of my, my studies. And uh, the, the, the piece that he's wearing there it's riveted, it's going to fail, you don't want that, right? This would be this would be forged out of a single piece of iron, um, eventually steel, and it would be it would be one cohesive piece. You can still do detailing on it, that was very common, obviously, mm -hmm. but that's that's done after the fact normally. Um, yeah. and armor was often embossed, you know, with the the, 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 the sort of the negative was hammered out from the back, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't look like that. That's yeah. that's distinctly two separate pieces that have been put together. Yeah, we have we have some interesting fantasy details. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Um, you can see even with his arms, like he's got two van braces, <laughs> yes. um, which don't really quite make sense. No, um, that, you don't need to articulate your forearm. If you're doing that, it's very broken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I do notice he's got demi gauntlets on as well, where the fingers aren't protected. Yes. Uh, and if you are using a two-handed sword, 
and you do not have finger protection, you're not going to have fingers for very long. So, um, because I, it's he, not that hard for your opponent to rip around that very, very thick, very bulky cross guard yeah, and uh, slice off that pinky finger. Yeah, the, the sword itself, which is supposed to be a kind of great sword, uh, from what yeah, I can tell, sort of is -hander much thicker than it needs to be. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's forgivable. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't know that unless you saw them. The the there are aspects to his design that I find are very interesting to look at, but obviously they're still exaggerated. Like his pauldrons are still big. If realistically, if he tried to lift his arm, he would have problems eventually. Where you know, in certain positions with long swords and things like that, where you're trying to bring your arms up, you don't want a big piece of metal to potentially be smacking you either in the lower jaw or you know, no. depending on how high no, up it is. However, um. I will. Here's where Callum might have interjected and said, "Okay, well, if he's meant to be a Breton, that means he might be a spellcaster, and it's okay. possible that he might need his hands free to cast spells, which is sure, why that's, he has that's to a opt, really interesting point yeah. uh, for okay. a demi gauntlet. Because um, you'll see later in the trailer, uh, he will do stuff with magic. Um, he doesn't use magic strictly speaking in the fight, but he does, you know, basically, you know, involve himself in deflecting a spell. But the Bretons are a magical race, and I'm pretty sure that the actual character can use magic in the fight. So I think there's kind of a requirement here, because the elf doesn't have any hand protection as well, presumably because in order to do magic, you need to have finger dexterity to, you know, cast a spell or whatever. But I do also like, I like to point out a little bit of detail here, which I think is actually quite clever. Um, do you see that little pentagon he's got on his right pauldron there? Yes. That's called a rondel. And that's to stop um, small daggers being slipped in underneath to penetrate the armpit, uh, because that was that was often one of the only weak spots in a knight's armor was you know under the under the chin, under the armpit, and behind the knee. Mm -hmm. And um, so they developed very specific daggers, right, stilettos, which was you know, there were these long thin spikes, and their only purpose was it didn't even have an edge; they were just a point. Yeah, was to slip in through those little gaps and then poke the arteries in the armpit yeah and so that little thing that's called a rondel they're normally round um you do sometimes see them in like a star pattern mm -hmm. i've never seen a pentagon one that's a cool design choice uh, that... and they well they were always dished outwards mm -hmm. never yeah. inwards to so stop, that they, uh... they, they wouldn't get caught on the or so, so they wouldn't get caught on the pauldrons mm -hmm. yeah um, otherwise I... the edges would get trapped under each other yeah i think that's quite a nice touch because it shows that that's like clever. you yeah. can you can understand the purpose of something historical while still trying to make it your own. Maybe in our world, yeah. we didn't develop, you know, the, these types of particular rondelles. But, you know, the fact that they do have rondelles points, you know, to a shared common purpose. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so the helmet is also really interesting because he has a more of a salé type helmet, uh, which is a, a type that you don't tend to see a lot in... Well, he doesn't have the second, uh, you know, the bevel that closes down. His is not one that you can articulate. But it clearly yeah, does look like a... this is an interesting design. Yeah. Like a salé. Um, so the fight that we see here is quite interesting because it's basically a 3v1. So in terms of your experiences, how often have you fought against multiple opponents by yourself? Uh, I can count them on two hands. I mean, <laughs> under 10. Uh -huh. um, because, because when you are wearing plate armor, even if you're very strong, you are slow. Mm -hmm. um, my full set, which was with modern steel, right, weighed 37 kilograms. Oof, the whole thing. Yeah, It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, man. Like you weigh, I mean, I, I weigh 80 at mm -hmm. peak muscle mass, right? And that, that's, that's almost double, there's almost 50% extra body weight, basically, that you just, and that's just to walk. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you're feeling, right? <laughs> um, when you have, if you have three lightly armored opponents against one person like this, if they get close enough to grapple you, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to slip knives into every gap in your armor and you're going to bleed out inside your steel coffin. Exactly. It's, it's you, when you are fighting like this, you have to maintain distance. So him coming out on... Also, why is... By the way, how did he get there? There's no door behind <laughs> right. him. So, Second point. Uh, uh, called quick, quick diversion. I just noticed this. Again, here... What's he doing on the roof? <laughs> here's, where I would, here's where Callum would jump in and uh, okay. point out there, there are lower reasons. Just... He was blasted okay. through the wall on the opposite side. So there's a... play that again? Yeah, yeah so there's, a, there's another part. You see his armor is still smoking, right? Oh, uh, so okay. beginning I, of, sorry, I missed that. At the beginning yeah, yeah. of this trailer... Um, here, you'll see that there is a green explosion. Uh, but that, no, that's them coming through the wall. Watch. Yeah, no, yeah so that's a green they explosion. Walk, they, yeah, they walk through that, though. Not him. And he gets pushed oh, okay, out. He, he was on the other side. Yeah. All right, I follow. So okay, he, cool. was, he was blasted <laughs> through that wall, which I think would probably kill okay. him, but, you know, uh, fantasy rules. Uh, no, you'd be surprised what you can withstand within... Uh, play if it's well-suited, if it's well-fitted, right? It it does a uh, it does a lot to suppress concussive damage. Mm -hmm. That's why um, that's why maces are shaped the way they are with the flanges. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you just hit someone in plate armor with a steel ball, 
you'll bruise him, but you're not going to kill him. Yeah. Um, the reason it's flanged is because that causes the metal to deform and then fail. Yeah. It's all put along one tip. Uh, yeah, the flanges you being those long yeah, sort of spikes almost. You concentrate the, the, the force the into a single point. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, whereas bladed weapons don't have enough mass to do mm -hmm. that, right? I have a... Yeah. Uh, so I've fought multiple opponents before. Uh, one of the major differences, I think, in HEMA is because we're unarmored, uh, we tend to do a lot of other types of... You can of, move. Yeah, we can yeah. move quite a bit, uh, even though we wear protective equipment. But um, here we have a, a situation where it's one against three. We have one very heavily armored person. We can see from this depiction that he's basically wearing full plate armor. Uh, yeah. He's got it on his legs, his arms, his head. Um, against three relatively lightly armored opponents, you know, I mean, they have metal armor, but let, let's be real, they're meant to be lightly armored. Um, yeah. And furthermore, we're fighting on uneven terrain, which I think would add additional complexity to it because they're fighting on a tiled roof. <laughs> and you know, those sabatons he's wearing, they don't flex that much, eh? Yeah. Um, your foot only bends so far forward and upwards. Yeah. And I mean, they're not really meant to go much more than that. Why would they? If your foot's bending more, then it's broken. Yeah. And the, the, <laughs> the I mean, I always found that fighting on sloped terrain, especially when you're um, at an angle like this, is. It's easier at an angle like this than it is facing upwards or downwards, mm -hmm. but it, it is difficult. Yeah. Because you can't see your feet, eh? That's a big part of it. Yeah. When you're walking around, you can normally see your feet. You can't see your feet in a helmet. Yeah, uh, especially um, one that doesn't have a lower visor. Um, yeah. I think, uh, so from my experiences, was, I fought like six on one before, um, but I had a I had a Montante or a Zweihander, one of those really big swords, kind of like what this guy has, but, but basically proportionally much, much bigger. Um, yes. And the trick, as you're, as you're saying, the trick is to keep everybody away. Um, in real life, people don't want to die. So rarely will yeah. you have someone do what these three are doing, which is completely and, and fearlessly just rush the, the guy in full plate armor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's, she's literally got magic, right? Like, why? <laughs> uh, yeah. One, so, one good crossbow and that man is dead. Uh, I, that's what from, I would go with. From what I remember, uh, you know, crossbows are uh, not actually in most of the Elder Scrolls games. I know in most of the modern Bethesda ones, they don't have crossbows. They had to be added in with additional okay. DLC content. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. You know, this guy, the rogue has a sword. The barbarian has an axe, which, you know, to his credit is quite a good That's a big axe, too. And he's a big guy. That could do some, that yeah. could kill you through So we'll, we'll, sure. we'll see how the yeah. fight will play out. But basically the goal when you're in a situation like this is you keep your opponents away from you. And you try to make sure that at any given moment, they're not all fighting you. Because what will happen is, as you said, they will tackle you to the ground and stab all of your vulnerable bits. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, we'll see how it plays out now. My, my go-to, if I'm in this situation, right? Number mm -hmm. one, I'm, I'm going to try my best to trip up the big guy, because it looks like he's going to charge, yeah. right? I'm going to try and sidestep, let him go past me, and then I'm, I'm going to go for the, the rogue man there. Because mm -hmm. uh, he's, he, uh, you know, magic not inclusive. He's probably the most dangerous. Would because you? Because if he's got a knife, that's what I'm afraid of. Well, I think he uh, has. That's that's what defeats armor. No, of course. I think, he, but I think he will fight with a sword. But I think another point to bring up is: Do you think it would be advisable to try and go with your back to the wall? Um, no. 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 Yeah. Because you because you can't you can't move your sword. Yeah. It'll it'll hit the wall. You'll get stuck. You can't maneuver. You need yeah, to yeah. be able to move. Okay. So I think we'll we'll see what the our our knight character does. Basically. The barbarian. That's a good start. Yeah. yeah, so he'll do a deflection with um against the rogue. He moved very quickly there. This man is <laughs> bloody strong. Holy hell! He just did a. He moved that sword like it weighed paper clips, man. <laughs> Look at that thing go! <laughs> yeah. Wow, this guy's got superhuman strength. Look at quickly. It's not. It does. It's not even a transitionary move. It's just there. Yeah. So he 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 did something very interesting. He first deflected yeah. uh the rogue sword, and because the rogue was the fastest, he came to him first, and he did a deflection, yeah. and then basically the you know he. It, batted aside the mage, and then when the barbarian comes to him, he has to dodge that strike and basically spin. Now, Yeah, look, I mean, obviously this is choreographed. <laughs> uh, and, oh, and there's the segmentation. Look at that yeah. breastplate. <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> <laughs> also, those pauldrons he's wearing would have the same problem the rogue does. Yeah. The second he lifts his hands up, it, I mean, obviously on a, on a character model, the parts can clip through each other. In real life, they can't. Yeah. Metal does not pass through metal very well. That's why we wear armor. Uh, and those, those pauldrons would a get in the way and b i think they'd be quite heavy mm -hmm. and they wouldn't achieve too much to be honest they're too thick yeah What's i think you, like? you want to uh, you'd want to pare them down uh oh yeah big time the ones i had were um i had a set of six floating very thin very thin steel plates mm -hmm. uh that that sort of wrapped around the arm mm -hmm. sort of starting they'd sort of sat right next to my neck there was a big one and then there were five smaller ones that sort of hung to about halfway down the bicep and uh, that allows it more than enough articulation you can get it above your head 
but it doesn't weigh much because um, if if that weighs one kg, right? Every time you lift your arm, you're moving. You're doing one kg, one kg dumbbell yeah. lift, right? Yeah. And uh, your sword's going to weigh one half. Your armor and your arm's going to weigh three. So every time you move your arm, you're doing a six kg dumbbell lift. Now I want you to go to the gym and do <laughs> seven hundred of those over twenty four hours and see if you can find a medieval battle. Right? That's the people really <laughs> underestimate how heavy this stuff is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Armor really has to be, you know, um, quite light uh, for it to be yeah, effective. Yeah. Uh, there are some specific cases, like, for example, in the very early period, uh, early modern, in, like, Pike and Shot, uh, they would often try to increase the density of the armor, uh, the thickness. But that was typically at the front, right? Yeah, yeah to, uh, to stop a bullet. But, yeah, yeah. It, but that was to stop yeah. a bullet, which is not the same thing as trying yeah. to stop a sword. No. Um, but that, you know. that weight's being rested on your shoulder blades not on your rotator cuff yeah you know that's it's a very different muscle group yeah it, by the time you know pike and shot rolls around full suits of armor are really fading out of, of obso uh, obsolescence and it's basically a, yeah. a breastplate and a backplate and maybe a helmet um for yeah. most people if they even have armor at all you know um it, people very quickly realize that more guns uh, is more effective than you know uh, heavily armored guys but it's almost like combat move towards range. Who knew? <laughs> so he does a couple of other interesting things uh, after the fight because he does the spin move that then knocks the elf down and then positions him to uh, uh, fight against, you know, knocking down the other two opponents. Yeah. And again, we, he's doing what we said we should do, which is not try to fight all three of them, knock each of them yeah. down, throw them off balance. Um, Absolutely. The issue is, of course... Would it not be easier to, while someone is down quickly, to try and maybe finish them off a little bit? I'm not quite sure if that's that's tenable I mean, in this I state. I wouldn't even worry about trying to stab them, because, look, obviously you're going to want to make sure your sword is constantly in motion here, because mm -hmm. the second you stop, you then have to build up the inertia again. You're going to have to do more work. Uh, as you know, if you just keep a sword in motion, right, especially when constantly powering multiple opponents, you reserve a lot of energy. Yeah. You allow their strikes and your blocks and your and just the weight of the weapon to pull it along through its arcs, right? Yeah. And all you need to do then is rotate your arm, rotate your wrist, twist your shoulder to direct it. Um, and I think what he's doing here is very clever. What I would do is kick him. They might yeah. roll off the roof. <laughs> I was just you know, like, just give him a good boot. <laughs> like, <it's>, uh... <laughs> I was just about to suggest he's wearing metal boots, yeah. right? He has metal sabotage. Yeah, I mean that so, would definitely fucking hurt. In theory, kick, kick the kick the mage in the sternum. She's yeah. unprotected for some reason. Yeah, kick the rogue in the head. Why is he wearing a hood? And uh, maybe go for the barbarian's nuts. He's, or maybe go for the beard. I don't know. He seems yeah. pretty well sturdy. Yeah, pretty the... sturdy. Of the, probably the scariest one. of the three of them, the barbarian is the one that I think because the sword's not really going to penetrate this armor, right? Um, no, so no chance. After he basically knocks down two of them, the rogue is back up because he was knocked down first in the fight, and he gets back, but he just gets muscled over <laughs> off the roof. And honestly, the fact that that man did not like he must have the strength of a god to to arrest that fall. If he's wearing what looks like I mean, about sixty percent of his body's covered in plate, he's probably probably weigh an extra 20 kgs you know mm -hmm. besides what he's carrying he's, he's he's moving with a lot of momentum there and for him to just stop is uh it's nigh on uh yeah Olympic, it, 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 that well, kind of skill yeah <laughs> the lord ascendant is meant to be quite a, a powerful character so maybe we can presume that he's very strong um you yes. know after all he did I'm survive about the ranger sorry oh the ranger about the ranger the way he's being thrown yeah the well, fact that because he's going to stop his fall yeah so now, right? what what happened that's what, pretty well, impressive so it, right now we, we have the situation where the knight has basically knocked down the ranger. Presumably, you know, he was trying to knock him off the roof, which is basically a clever plan. Uh, the fewer people you have to deal with, the better off you'll be. Um, however, he gets saved right at the last moment by the, uh, uh, by the elf, by the mage. Yeah, okay. And this He's is... He's strong then too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, maybe she's using magic. Oh, she's magic. really strong. <laughs> Play it forward a bit. Hold on. I, I was watching a bit on the side. Play it forward here. Watch what she does now. This is incredible. We'll go back to the fight with the barbarian. But yeah, she Whoa! basically... <laughs> Oh my god, she's a super... I mean, she's not human, I guess, so we can count that out. <laughs> yeah, you know, the Tolkien described the elves as being, like, really strong, and all the depictions of... We never get to see the swole elves in media, so maybe... Yeah, dude, where are my swole elves at? I, want, I don't want these, like, like feline, graceful, aquamarine creatures. Give me... Give me just... Where's, uh, where's Staticus Rex? Like, I just want a big dude with golden hair. <laughs> yeah, but... the dream. Amazing that she was able to fling him without also then, you know, herself falling off the roof <laughs> yeah. all right yeah i mean conservation of momentum there. <laughs> yeah because for her to swing him that way she has to turn the other way so you know mm -hmm. it, it, she's not holding on to anything 
Um, but we did skip, um, obviously, all that stuff with the Nord. Um, Let's see what he does. So while these two are getting ready to do their... Fo- I think it's called a Fossball Special. I know Wolverine... The Hulk used to throw Wolverine, and they used to call that a Fossball Special. Okay. So, uh, you know, while that's happening, uh, our Nord has to uh, go for... Oh, I like that leg hook. That's clever. That's exactly what you want to do in that situation. If you've got a bearded axe, that's, that's what you're going for. That's uh, good. You get behind the leg, and you, I don't. You I think I think that's a perspective issue. I don't actually think he's behind the leg. I think he was stopped further down. Uh, no, he, I think he was going for the leg. Yeah, he was like, going it, for it the leg. It looks like he was striking down. Yeah, and then he's been parried. But I mean, that was that's the right move on his part because it also opens you up for a a, a pommel strike. Um, if you had a second weapon, an offhand weapon, mm-hmm. or just a punch if you got gauntlets. So yeah, he's trying to buy time because, and we can see from his perspective, he's not very well armored. Right, he's got hide. You know, a little bit of scale yeah. here and there. Uh, yeah. So even though he's quite a big fellow, he's nowhere near as well armored as our knight, who you can I see is all that light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in terms of like you know the the relative protection. However, very cool design. It oh. does unstable him, and we do what we see. What I yeah. quite like about this fight is there is a, quite an, uh, an emphasis on basically brawling. Right. Yeah. You've you've described uh, Bohurt as basically rugby but with armor. Yeah, and... <laughs> that's a that's a very that's a very fair description to be honest. And yeah. when it comes to it, realistically speaking, most weapons that we associate, like swords and spears and stuff like that, are going to have a difficult time getting through armor, especially plate armor. However, when you're close cool. enough to punch somebody, and you're a strong person, this Nord is very strong, right? Uh, from what okay, we can, can see. Can you wind it back just one, one or two frames there? Just give us a, give us a left tap. Okay, run yeah. it again. I want to show you something incredible here. So what you're going to see now... Okay, just let it play, let it play. And boom! What you just saw is a man break his hand. Because <laughs> he just punched steel yeah. at full, full force. <laughs> he just broke three knuckles. <laughs> He's got no plating. He has got that little hand guard, and I, I can't see from here whether or not that extends past the knuckles, but it looks like it's attached to fabric, and that fabric would shift. Yeah. What would happen is it would retract, and you would break your knuckles. And I know this because I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to fight in, in uh, clamshell... No, sorry, not clam- I, I now fight in clamshell gauntlets. I mm-hmm. used to fight in mittens, which are... Um, they segmented fingered gauntlets, right? Mm-hmm. Incredibly protective, uh, very, very versatile. But the, the problem they have is impact mitigation. Yeah. So there's a plate that runs over the knuckles, right? And that is segmented so that your hand can still flex upward. Mm-hmm. And what happened is I, a guy, I was in a very similar position. I swung, I punched a dude across the head and the, 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 the knuckle protector locked up, it seized. And my hands then slipped forward in the gauntlet because the entire Ooh. metal apparatus sort of pulled back against the leather and my knuckles connected with the metal and they broke immediately. <sighs> it is it is okay. not something you can... You cannot do that. I don't care who you are or how <laughs> Danish your bloodline is. You're not punching a plate helm. And, yeah. away. and, we, and we see um, that because he's... He, you know, his hands are basically busted. Or his hand is basically busted. And instead of being able it? to... Well, instead of being able to follow up with that strike because he knocks down the knight... Um, yeah, yeah. He, he knocks down the knight, and instead of being able to follow through with that strike, which would normally have happened, uh, you Oof, see he's like, yeah. ah, you know, instead of following through yeah, with yeah. anything, because this recoils. guy is basically on the floor, he's, he, he recoils. Now, mm. I, I have gauntlets the myself. This is gorgeous. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I do like it, right? I, I know we're ragging on it, but I actually do think this meets a higher no, bar stunning. than most other oh, fantasy, yeah. you know, armor. Certainly. Absolutely. It's functional. Uh, yeah, it uh, looks it, really good. Yeah, you know, it, it's the kind of thing that looks good, uh, even if it looks functional, even if it isn't functional, you know? Um, yeah. But I, I fight with articulated gauntlets, mostly just because I need much more hand dexterity. You know, I fight with loads of other weapons, side swords and rapiers and things like that, that don't... You know, you need complicated hand movements in order to be able, in order to actually be able to use them. But if yeah. I was going to use, you know, something, um, you know, if I was going to punch somebody, I would want a clamshell because the shell would protect your hand completely, and it doesn't matter, you know, the shell will enclose around your your, your fingers. So you know, and you're... you'd be astonished how much uh, how much flexibility you still have in them, depending on the design. Right? Yeah. Uh, the the biggest thing is that you can't really, you know, how some people like to uh, you form the ring with your finger, and then you have a very loose grip on the bottom three fingers. Yes. And you use that, especially on the offhand, and then you can use that to sort of. Uh, with a longer sword, you can use that to sort of quickly pivot it mm-hmm. in multiple directions for fast fast strikes. Uh, you sort of lose that ability a bit with the clamshell, but you can still... I mean, most of the rotation comes from your wrist. Yeah. Um, and as long as they're well-designed, that's not going to be limited, but you're going to still have fingers. Yeah. And it's... Uh, <laughs> you know, there's that meme of, like, the space captain, and he's got two buttons in front of him. And it's a very <laughs> popular one in the Boho community, and it says, look good with fingered gauntlets, 
have fingers. <laughs> Those are the two options. Yeah, because <laughs> they do look a lot cooler, but man, they just don't have the same level of protection. No, no, um, for sure. I I like uh, having fingered gauntlets myself, but I don't need. Do you know to... where they originate? It's uh, it's for it's for mounted knights, so they can use their reins. Yeah, I was a uh, well. Yeah. We we also tend to see them with uh, in the Renaissance when you have guys who are operating pistols and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, they want to be able to yeah. fire a gun, even though Absolutely. you know. Yeah, relatively speaking, these are very early firearms, but they still want to be able to have that ability. So they. Want I mean, to be if they've even got gauntlets on at all, then right, because they're not probably not expecting to engage close combat. So like it's a. Uh... Well, sometimes I mean there there are some examples in like the Renaissance, early modern period, where it's like oh, every horseman in plate armor has to have at least a couple, you know, pistols or whatever. Um, yeah. And they're not what they're not expecting to do is reload them. <laughs> no, no, it's probably out of the question. Yeah, but they are expecting to use them, but they're not expecting to reload them. You know, there's a famous account from the English Civil War, which is in the 1650s, 1640s, about I think it's the 1640s, um, of a fully armed uh, cuirassier getting shot point blank at. Uh, by a pistol uh, in the head, in his armor, in his full plate armor, and yeah. he's fine. He's just a little dazed, but he's fine. So yeah, I, I don't want to give you those, the... those were those were those were lead rounds, right, and fairly impure ones at that. So they probably probably bounced and squashed and yeah, yeah. But know, he, but you know, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give the impression that armor is completely useless against firearms because in the very beginning it wasn't, but. You know, it is heavy, right? This this is a guy who's not capable of really running around by himself. He has to be on a horse to be effective. Oh yeah, it, absolutely. It, and that horse is going to have the thighs of a god. Yeah. <laughs> tell you right now. <laughs> That's going to be a big boy. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's let's move it yeah, forward. What's yeah. The so next back. Scene? So yeah. from this moment, he does the the knight will seize the initiative. Basically, you see, he doesn't even he, he he's not used his other hand on the axe because he's it's hurting, right? So he has to swing it okay. one handed, which will reduce his power. And the knight takes advantage of that by using the pommel, which is very good, right? Mm -hmm. Every part of the sword right is a weapon it's to <laughs> hit him in a unprotected part of his face because he has a beard opening for his armor. <laughs> and he gets hit you in know, the chin. Do, do you see the second cross guard on his sword there? Yes, he has a forward. One. He has a, yeah. he has a forward. So that's very common in on great swords, especially I have uh, not seen that before really uh yeah, yeah so um sword cross guard. yeah so on large great swords especially large two-handed ones very very big great swords often after the ricasso period you see there's like a leather wrap right? yeah, yeah, that's so the ricasso, ricasso. Yeah. after that period you will often see secondary parrying hooks right is this more like in the zweihander yeah it's, it's I, more I, of a never, <clears> I mean, with bohut you don't really deal with long weapons because it's all close combat stuff right so yeah it's, we all it's all falchions and maces yeah. and axes and hatchets and whatnot uh, a lot of arming swords. We don't a lot of a lot of hand in the half slash bastard swords. We don't do a lot of. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use a proper Zweihander. I have uh, three miles. Too big. <laughs> What's that? I have three. I can't. Uh, well, okay. Well, you mean for Bohurt? <laughs> I mean for Bohurt specifically. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, I, I fought against you with your Zweihander in your. Um, I remember that many years ago. Uh, you you kicked my ass with it because I couldn't get close. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's miserable. But the um, I'm not used to unarmed oh, no, combat. In Bohurt, you kind of just walk forwards while yeah. the little thing bounces off your helmet. Yeah, the original <laughs> pay to win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but that's uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. Anyway, carry yeah, on. That's, no, that's, so that's there, a nice there, lesson for me. These yeah. forward uh, parrying hooks. Um, they 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 okay. well yeah in English they they have there like uh, there are some German words that I don't want to even begin to pronounce but uh, their use is somewhat debated some people speculate that they are used to additionally help with parries because a blade sliding down your very long blade will hit those first before they hit the actual cross guard mm. um, another I don't know how much use that would be there well some of them are quite big um, some of them are also curved uh, so they trap swords a little bit better and some of them are pointed as well. Uh, they're not always like this. Uh, and okay. depending on the sword, they can be quite big. Uh, I've seen some examples in museums of the parrying yeah. hooks that are very large. Uh, but another practical reason to have them is if you put your other hand on that leather bit, if you're yeah, hard-swording, you, you have additional protection on your hand uh, if you need it. Um, what I was thinking about that, actually, is exactly that. Is Because, I mean, if it was if you did catch it on that second cross guard there, uh, the parry hook, um, your fulcrum is going to be further away than you normally would have it, right? Because typically, if you capture an enemy sword, you want it right up against your hilt, because then you have the most torque uh, available to you, right? Like right at, you, can, you have the most control over where you're pushing it. But if it was separated like that, it would actually they would still have some play. But like you said, if you move your hand up and half sword, then I think you would remove that disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, okay. are, there are loads Great. of different, there are loads of different yeah. reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, of course, uh, some people speculate that they're therefore dealing with pikes. 
um, as well. Ah, um, to like catch them. Yeah, yeah to help uh, like catch the spear up. Yeah, yeah, if you if you mm. take that, if you have a sword that has some protrusions on the side and you push it into a group of pikes, it will catch more than just. You know, it'll actually have an effect of starting to catch them, you know. I don't know if I'd want to push my sword up with a bunch of pikes pointing at me. I feel like they're <laughs> going to get stabbed. <laughs> so, well, supposedly... I'll, I'll move to and then the third guy's going to stab me in the gut. Well, supposedly, <laughs> <laughs> supposedly that's what they were used for. There's lots of speculation that these types of swords, Y-handers, were used for breaking up pike blocks. Uh, that's I, think, why... I think we have to start a new rule where medieval historians have to fight in melee at least seven times before they're allowed to write a paper. Because a lot of the stuff I see, I'm just like, that's not good. Someone's, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you're doing this. You're going to die. <laughs> like, <it's not. laughs> All right. Anyway, let's see. Okay, anyway, yeah. So he strikes him in the face and basically he knocks him back. Then our, our, oh, our, nice parry. our bit goes. Yeah. yeah. There's a parry. And the three of them are back in the fight. And Gorgeous we have dodge, a bunch yeah. of yeah, a bunch of different dodges. Now I think he would have probably been dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, if yeah. that it, does he have a breastplate on? Can you uh, go back a few frames? Yeah, I think um, I think he might have one. But uh, that that looks like it hit the neck, as well. No, he does have. He's got like a leather hubuck. Yeah. It, it might have stopped. It, it, it could have been a shallow. Yeah. It could have been a shallow. Could have been a shallow. Well. But the point yeah. is that it sends him flying, yeah. right? Which means that it was quite a no, big. That looked like it hit his neck to me, man. Like the tip was <laughs> right by his head. Either way, he's lost some beard hair. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> so he falls back, um, yeah. and he's down. Oof. You know. And here's the moment where I really want. This is the moment when I was like, I have to talk he's to Mazda. Look hey. at what he does, right? Yeah. Ah. It's ooh, ooh. a perfect exchange. That is sexy. Oh, right in the kidney, then with the right hook. Oh, dude, yeah, that is... It's a, it's a perfect exchange because it's what you want to see with a man in full plate armor who doesn't have to worry about a his guy yeah. with his sword, right? Um, you know, he does something which is really interesting because he'll first... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. But he'll first... Um, uh, he'll that first man's forearm push. is cut open. If that, yeah. Sorry, he got he. That's a nasty hit, man. He's hurt <laughs> for sure. <laughs> he first stops his strike, which you can totally do, right? If you don't have to worry yeah, about, you, you you don't yeah. have to be afraid of a guy with absolutely. a sword if you're this well protected. So you can just put your hand on his sword, and the sword is only dangerous. It's not a lightsaber, right? It's only dangerous mm -hmm. if it's in motion. And then yep. this guy is completely like caught flat-footed here because he doesn't you know respond in time and then using the other and you can see he's his holding legs it. are also like way out of position look yeah. at them they're, they're so spread it's, it's what i tell my students you know footwork is everything but you see him it here is, it is 95 percent of all martial arts yeah. he's holding his sword with the by the ricasso basically with the leather grip and he just jams it into the kidney of that guy <laughs> such, a, such a good move <laughs> which is you know it's a very powerful move that pobble on the end of that sword is a weapon right it is, as, as every part of uh, uh, the weapon, you know, as the blade, it, it, when used as a comprehensive system, he's stunned, and then he follows it up with a punch, and that sends this man flying. Realistically speaking, I think this guy should be out. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, that's a no he's wearing a freaking cloth hat, man. Like, he's, that's a knockout, for sure. <laughs> he was punched in the face with a metal gauntlet. Yeah, he... he, he oh, should... no, he, is, uh, he doesn't have it. He's got a demi-gauntlet, so he's punched in the face with a leather glove. But, and yes, it's... Uh... So, this, this fighter, weirdly enough, this is the one I'd be probably at this point the scared, most scared of put the magic aside look at the look at the width of that blade it is tiny yeah <laughs> that's going to fit through the isolate that's going to fit under the armor it's going to fit in all the unnecessary segmentation you've got going on mm -hmm. like that is and you just need one little nick yeah one little nick on a tendon or an artery and, and it, you are having a very bad day well like it's the uh, oh it's scary yeah if the if the if the elf could keep her blade Presumably in front of her and use it to you know d defend any attacks. Presumably this yes. is kind of worrying. However, it doesn't come to that because the two of them lock. You see, it catches on the parrying hook. Yeah, like what we yeah. said, uh, right? It, and it, I think it, that's I think that's a believable lock because because he's still pulling it up. You know, it's not in motion. The yeah. sword was arrested completely. It had to start again. That's just muscle power. She's stopping. They could absolutely go one for one on that. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Then Ooh, trying to. Hyped, she tries to use magic, basically. Why didn't she use magic previously? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, that's, always, that's always spot on, right? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it's always like, why didn't you start this by throwing a lightning bolt? You know, fry this guy in his armor. Um, and then just keep doing that until it's over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it doesn't work because the knight sees that she's... And you can see it in her face. It's like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this is potentially... Yeah, this is potentially why. She doesn't have any actual hand protection. She has a glove on, right? And she can see and she has a van brace. But she has, um, yeah, I love how he often he halves with the weapon, right? Because it's just... That's yeah, really good. It, yeah, it, it's, it's such a common tactic and people don't, you don't see it in movies yeah. ever. 
Um, and also, it makes it just easier to wield the sword, right? You Absolutely. don't always have to hold it. You yeah. can just hold it by the blade and just walk around with it, you know, especially mm-hmm. if you're in close quarters. She doesn't have any gauntlets on. He presumably because you need to do have no hand you know for the actual spells but then this sure. is the you know this is the moment where it's like okay well damn so he sees that that's happening and he redirects the um the blast i guess the magical blast back into her Absolutely. which probably would kill her because she flies into a stone pillar and yeah oh dude her and the pillar breaks dude her spine is dust <laughs> oh my god well maybe that's what that ridiculous little uh corset the steel it's, corset she was wearing. Yeah. That's, that's the spine brace, yeah. She's been... From the last time this happened. So another... <laughs> another really nice detail about this is that he catches the bit, uh, the, uh, the weapon in between on the Rokasso area, which is something that you do see depicted uh, in, 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 in manuals and stuff like that, where you use the in-between bit, because that's a substantial part of the sword, right? Yeah. To stop enemy attacks. And our Nord recovered, presumably, from being... Can I tell you what I would do here? which I think is, it's, it's not something that would be very intuitive, right? But when you have fought in armor, you understand its limitations mm-hmm. and also its abilities. What you do here, once you've arrested the momentum, you let that, you let that axe move forward, connect with the helmet, and you slice the sword downwards along the palm and you take off his fingers. Mm-hmm. Because you, that axe isn't going to go through your helmet. You've stopped it, right? All that's going to happen is now that you're, you're providing a more stable <laughs> platform for you to move your sword along. It's harder for him to parry. Mm-hmm. He's got that fin on his helmet. He could trap the the blade against. You know that that is, and, and the sword is long enough to um, to do that with that with ease. You know, mm-hmm. by the time you you know you just move the right arm backwards a bit, that brings the blade back into contact. His hands are done. It's over. In, uh, it, uh, well, I think we have very. Di- you and I, you know, this is why I wanted to talk to you because I we have a different yeah. instinct. My instinct actually would be to go for a disarm. <laughs> oh no no, just let him hit you. Your arm is there to stop pits. Let him hit you. <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't you know I, I don't normally fight in armor. So yeah. my my natural instinct is oh this is the perfect disarm position you know because I don't even want the yeah. weapon to come close to me. I, yeah, I suppose to... you could do, you could do like a rotational disarm right? You press yeah. the right arm upwards, pull the left arm down. Uh, you know, put your right foot in put your <laughs> <laughs> and turn it all about. Yeah, yeah, but th- this is you know because I, I I don't think oh I'll just let the you know the axis hit me because it's it's robbed of all of its force now so it's not really going to do mm-hmm. anything. Um, and then from here we have basically he gets disarmed right. Which, yeah, you didn't go for the fingers. Yeah, because he didn't <laughs> go for the fingers. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now it, it, he does what I think you should do. If you're feeling that the weapon is going, just let it go, right? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, don't get pulled with don't, it. Don't get yeah, pulled with it. You don't want to get unfooted. Exactly. Footwork is everything. So he then grapples with this guy, and now they're struggling. And he goes for something which is very unexpected. Like he breaks he, the weapon. <laughs> he pimp slaps the cake. Oh my god, dude. He just slaps through it. Look at that. So here's... See, a- me? Me? Again, I'm headbutting that, that wounded hand, the one he punched me with. I'm headbutting that thing, dude. Break those knuckles more. He's not holding well, it again afterwards. <laughs> well, just wait and see. But I think that was meant to be an indication that this guy is much stronger than he lets on, right? Yeah, because I don't think a, human a normal human yeah. would not have the strength to break a very thick half. Not. Uh, in half with basically a single, you know, uh, a unless snack. it was like cracked already or something, you know, maybe the termites have been at it. I don't, I don't but I, even then, I, I don't see a palm strike uh, doing that without breaking your hand too. Yeah, doing that much force. Um, but he does it, and then he just punches the no square in the plate armor. Yeah, uh, and that's a badass. Oof. Yeah, it, he. I did, mean, he I don't know if you like that helmet's pretty thick. I don't think that's going to knock him out. But yeah, I don't think it'll uh, knock him out either. But you know, generally speaking, it was quite a effective, um, you know, punch. Uh, he, he's Absolutely. doing what you have hey, to do. Get him off the roof. Good yeah, man. yeah. There we <laughs> and go. Going to, the environment. And he's capable of lifting him. You know, this one guy with this one arm. Pretty so he's, strong, dude. Okay, maybe it would knock him out with that much torque. Uh, yeah, this guy's strong. <laughs> So now, because, of course, this is ostensibly the bad guy, we can't have him win the fight. Look at those segments on that Vambrace. What is the point, Emilio? Yeah. You know what a Vambrace does? A Vambrace stops cuts from a sword. <laughs> Do you know what sword of? Gaps. Do you know what I see two of right in front of me? I see two gaps in the Vambrace. <laughs> Perfect cutting orientation. This is idiotic. What are you doing? You don't need to articulate your forearms. It's a solid bone. You know, I oh just, my god, I'm I just, losing my mind. <laughs> I just noticed this earlier, but she also has what appears to be like a metal neck brace. So maybe she did survive the the That's the... just her that's just her cute choker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now she uses magic to incapacitate our character, right? However, um, you know, she's trying to presumably pull him. He sees the sword. But again, because the Bretons are very magical, I think the implication here is he broke the spell. 
Okay. Because sure. Breton's a very magical, it. he is capable of doing this magical negation, so he did it. He breaks the spell, she's out, and then he t- he gets stabbed. Yeah, but where's I? I okay, now when, I, when, I, when you sent this to me originally, I did watch it, right? And when we watched it back now at the start, I I saw it as well, and I wonder where he's getting stabbed because I was I went back and I looked, and I can't see any particularly glaring gaps in that torso armor. Maybe he's getting stabbed in the thigh, but if we keep playing. I'm You'll see the um. He's pretty... holding his. He's holding his kidney. Yeah, he's holding. See, if you look there, it, it would absolutely not... not get through that. There's no chance in hell, even with the ridiculous segmentation. Uh, um, I guess the no. yeah. Well, the only counter point that I could offer is perhaps maybe the blade is enchanted. However, that being said, sure. if the blade was enchanted, it would have just cut through all of these other guys previously. Yeah, but also, like, if the blade's <laughs> enchanted, then why are we talking? We're not debating yeah, the realism yeah, no, here. The blade, <laughs> Elder Scrolls weapons tend to glow if they're enchanted, this that didn't. So I guess the what we're meant to take from this is that the Nord is also very strong, and he's capable of jamming the sword in there. I think Rude. it would have made more sense for him yeah. to have been stabbed in the thigh, because you can see that the... Yes, there are gaps. There are yeah. gaps that he has the left in the thigh. There. You can see it right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Those hanging pieces he's got are... Um, those are very common, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, especially in mounted troops, because obviously you have to have your legs splayed out. Yeah. Uh, for foot soldiers, you would have had a solid piece that was strapped to your leg. Uh, much more protective, but uh, a little bit more restrictive in mobility. You can't really lift your legs sideways. Unless you're doing squats on the battlefield, that's not <laughs> a problem, though. Um, you just kneel. But the... Uh, so, like, this is clearly... I mean, I mean... Everything about his armor screams mounted knight. So, I mean, he's clearly not in his element fighting here. So he's done pretty well regardless. But for me, if we take this from a realistic... Again, let's say this is late 14th, early 15th century armor. I'm going to say, man, that that, that tip on that sword is breaking before <laughs> the armor does. I don't think there's a... Ch- like, the iron content in these swords was so high back then. They were quite brittle. Um, I don't think it would survive a stab like that. Certainly, the, certainly the, the metallurgy definitely improved, but if the yeah. sword metallurgy improved, the armor metallurgy definitely improved. Absolutely. Uh, it, was always, it was an arms race. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, think it, <laughs> I, I think it would have made sense for him to have been stabbed in the thigh. Um, yes. Just, and I, or, I think even, the effect would have been the same. The, even underneath that curious, you know, see, see there's yeah. a slight gap above the belt. That would have been a, a very valid, very, I had, a, I had a breastplate very similar to this. So I can, I can attest to the fact that, and I've been stabbed square in the abdomen hmm. um, by like a hand and a half sword, a bastard sword, which are much thicker than the average long sword would be. And it does not, it dents, mm-hmm. it hurts, you get winded, it does not penetrate. Yeah. Like it's a... Uh, mm. Well, yeah, I mean, we don't, maybe, yeah, it, it, from the audio, uh, it, the implication is that there is a penetration, but I think it could have also, you know, maybe it would have been more effective to just been like winding him, you know? Uh, because yeah. the effect yeah. is that we have this yeah. guy who's now winded, uh, the other heroes realize, for some reason, that now is the time to do some crazy plan instead of trying to, I don't know, do something else. And he pulls oh, a dagger. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't have to, you, you've got him on his knees, stab him under the throat, and he's done. He's over. Yeah. Okay, like, so... lift the helmet back. <laughs> go through the ice slit. Yeah. Why, are you, why are you bothering with this elaborate nonsense? <laughs> so they go for a move that presumably is meant to take down his back of, the back of his leg. And yeah. then they bring down some masonry on him. Oh, they which... did him dirty. Yeah. Oh no. Which knocks him down here. Uh, oh, and he, ding. He, yeah. He's, he's, I, what's funny is that if you look on the comments, everyone is like, "Oh no, the knight." <laughs> oh yeah, I'm team knight. Hundred percent. This dude put up a winning fight. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You, you know, fighting three people on one and winning, uh, you know, is quite an effective thing. And then you get to see that the you know the heroes look on and the volcano and the, yeah, yeah, yada 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. The yeah, boring so, stuff. Yeah, the boring yeah, stuff is yeah. finished. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I think this was really interesting. Uh, I'm really glad that we uh, got to to talk about it. Uh, certainly, I think uh, this guy is a uh, like a he's the Sigma Knight, you know. <laughs> oh, absolutely! This dude's uh, got Patrick Bateman uh, yeah. <laughs> YouTube edits coming his way very soon. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, uh, you you've given me the next idea for our next YouTube short. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I also you know I'm Team Knight. Um, I think uh, it was really. The choreography in this was, I think, a lot better than the standard choreography that we're used to seeing in fantasy uh, trailers. C- certainly, there are little touches, like with the kidney strike with the pommel. I thought that was like, ah, okay, so someone is actually looking at this and not just, uh, you know, wildly flailing about for, for you know, no purpose, you know? Oh, it was, I will say his, so I, I think that the, the team did not fight very well as a team. I think that what we see is that the three, the three protagonists there, 
they they fight as individual fighters. There was very little coordination until right at the end, mm-hmm. right? And um, if they had planned that assault, not planned, but if they had a, maybe a bit more experience fighting together, and as you said, they have, I'm very surprised what we didn't see is just big man gets up in front, mage tries to trip him up, and the rogue comes in with two knives. Yeah. And then it's, it's over in two seconds, right? Uh, mm-hmm. The visibility in those great helms, like he's wearing there, the Sabo style one, or Salad style one, sorry. They are... It's not, it's not terrible, but it's limited. Yeah. Right. Especially below your nose, it's very limited. Um, you have excellent vision directly in front of you, and depending how close the faceplate is to your eyes, you can also get decent peripheral. Mm-hmm. Um, but your vision below your nose is nothing. It's apt. You cannot see yeah. through there. Right. You can see directly down if you if you like sort of bend your face inside the helmet. You can look down to your chest uh, through the bottom. But you, you, are, you cannot yeah. see your feet. And they didn't exploit that once. Mm-hmm. And that's actually one of the most common ways mounted knights were killed is that foot soldiers would get up right next to them, stab them behind the knee on the horse, pull them off, and then stab them under the helmet. It was because they can't, they literally cannot see. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, it, is the, it is by far and away the most common way they were dispatched. And even in mounted, even in standing combat, um, a, a, a common tactic is to get into your opponent's periphery or behind them because uh, you limit their vision. Mm-hmm. Or if you are lucky, you can go for a low tackle and then once he's down, stab. Like yeah. it's it's all about the um, it's all about getting through the, the gaps. Yeah, and you I, we didn't see them try that once. Yeah, I think uh, no, of course I, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. I think uh, we have a credible presentation of what it's like to fight, and it's not fully authentic. Oh, but the it... knight fought perfectly. <laughs> like. But the what he was doing, his opponents fought badly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, he shouldn't have lasted that long. Is sort of what I'm saying. Yeah, I uh, yeah no, I I I think I tend to agree. Uh, I think yeah. for me, from my perspective as a Hema fighter, I think what I would have preferred to see uh, is basically just them struggling to get close to the great sword. Right? If this guy yeah. knows how to use yeah. a sword and he just starts moving it around him, right? Yeah. Uh, they will not be able to get close. And they're lightly armored. They can't take the kinds of risks that he can, right? No. So I think, you know, he could have basically just pushed them off the roof by using the fact that, A, you either get hit with my sword or you jump off this roof, right? Uh, I think it would have been really interesting to see some blade work uh, in that perspective. You don't tend yeah, to see a lot of really it. See him, yeah, we didn't really see much um, sort of dancing, I guess. It was all very much heavy swings. It was brawling, Yeah, it was like brawling. you described. It was... Uh, it's it's very much how Western medieval knights are depicted in modern media is these big hulking brutes who swing big sword and kill little man, but it's in reality, um, it was not like that. Yeah, probably. there is finesse to it. Uh, there's a lot of finesse to it, and and again because hitting a dude really freaking hard with the big sword, if he's wearing plate armor, is going to dent your sword and do <laughs> nothing to him. Yeah, <laughs> you need to get the tip into the gaps, or you're doing nothing. Yeah, I think. Uh, um... it's, uh, it's I, important I, to understand that, you know? I, I think before we close off, because this has been really fun, but I think one yeah. final point that I think might have made the fight maybe just perfect would be if they all started in different, like, if they were separated, right? So yeah. if yeah. if it was yeah. just, and they say, came together. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if it was, say, for example, the rogue by himself against this knight, you could have had an excuse for him to just do a lot of dancing around, right? Because he can't yes. actually do anything. Uh, and then introduce each fighter separately, and then slowly but surely see them evolve a strategy to work with them together, right? Because the Agreed. rogue might try to dance around, and the knight will just no sell him. You know, he'll just refuse to uh, uh, bow under the pressure of the blades. The elf could try magic, and the you know then you know that, that the the knight could dispel the magic or something. And then you know the nord could try strength, and he finds that he's not strong enough to actually you know best this guy. And then you could see them having to work together with a plan. Um, yeah. and, but that, that but otherwise, I really enjoyed this. Um, would my, you like to uh, give it a score out of 10? Let's do one for one for overall. Sc- we'll do a, an armor score, choreography mm-hmm. score, overall score. What would you give it? Okay, I think uh, in terms of the knight's armor, I think he's probably a 7.5, probably an 8 for me. Yeah. Be- just because the, yeah. this is fantasy. It's not like he's, a, he's depicted in like a properly, you know, Milanese type harness. Uh, but in terms of fantasy stuff, I think it's much better than the norm. Uh, in terms of the characters, the other heroes, I'm going to give them maybe a 5 or a 6, just because it, it is kind of fantasy stuff that we see. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's nothing not, groundbreaking. It's nothing groundbreaking or completely visually striking, you know. So there's, not, there's no design where I looked, oh yeah, this design is really good, even if the armor is bad, let's you know, keep it, you know. Um, 
uh, let's see. Choreography, I feel like this is a really interesting fight to watch. I've watched this trailer a couple of times. Um, no, it's, 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 very, it's very engaging. It's very it's, engaging. It's so, fluid, it's smooth. Yeah, yeah. so uh, is it a perfect representation of a fight? No. Uh, I don't think you could have that in a trailer for a game. But no. I think... Uh, it'd be very boring. Yeah, it'd yeah. be very boring. I, I feel like this is like maybe a nine in terms of like what I've seen. Just because I've yeah. seen some very bad stuff. <laughs> uh, it gets plus one for the pommel strike alone. Honestly. Oh, yeah. It's so well, nice to no, see some hard sword. When I too. saw so that rare. moment, I thought, <laughs> yeah. we. I have to talk to Miles about this because this is the an actual depiction of using the sword like an actual sword would have been used you know right like when do you see half sorting in modern media it just they just don't do and it looks so cool everyone's got a fucking sorry everyone's (laughs) got a freaking backwards sword like why why point the tip of your pointed weapon towards your own body and then and then it like goes along the forearm and oh you look so cool my sword's backwards i don't have to fight with a forward sword i'm a ninja man no just half sword it it's a it's a real thing and it looks great (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> the only thing that would have made it even it my mind. Uh, perfect would have been like a Mordhau, maybe. If he had done like a Mordhau on somebody. Oh, yeah. Uh, For and... those of you who don't know, a Mordhau is uh, not the video game. Uh, it is uh, you take a two-handed position on the blade side of the sword, and you strike through an opponent's armor using the crossguard. And it's the idea is to direct all the weight and mass of your arms and the sword along a single tiny point. Yeah, basically, e- turn it into a yeah, either either the pommel or the crossguard. Yeah, uh, you strike. Yeah. And basically, you don't, you don't see pommel all that often, do you? You but no. but but the the, the crossguard strike is very common. Yeah, it's um yeah. it's designed to basically del- it's um, Mordhau is a murder stroke, right? It's designed to. So I feel yeah, like it would have been nice to see him try to do that on one of the gr- uh, downed people, and then maybe yes. they dodged. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or they rolled yeah, out of the way. Breaks the tile. Or something. Uh, yeah. Breaks the tile or something. I think that would have been you know really cool to see because that would have been a 10 out of 10 for me but even as it was i think it was really good overall i think this is probably an eight in terms of like presentation okay. it's just a shame okay. the game is not like this <laughs> what about you yeah no, i mean it wouldn't be right it's, it's a lot to ask so for me uh i would give just to quickly wrap up i'd give the the knight's armor um allowing allowing some variance and, and some some you know, you know some style points uh that's gonna get a, a comfortable eight 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 and a half for me i would feel comfortable fighting in this minus those ridiculous yeah. pauldrons um but i would there would be some other changes i'd make you know mm-hmm. maybe put some more breathing holes in the faceplate so you don't suffocate or maybe uh, have but, a you know other visor yeah, that you uh, can lift up yeah but you know not when you're being stabbed <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i i do like the i, I do like the, the overall aesthetic of all of the characters i think they look really good for their roles mm-hmm. uh, i really like the barbarian's armor um horns notwithstanding uh, the mage looks ridiculous the rogue looks really cool um, so I'd get, I think, overall score for armor, I'd probably give it all a six and a mm-hmm. half um, for everybody combined. The uh, the choreography was excellent on the knight's part. Uh, and I think, you know, if we're trying to depict people filing, fighting poorly against an armored <laughs> opponent, then 10 out of 10, to be honest. Yeah. It's really, it was very, very good. Um, and then overall score, probably like a seven mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a... Um, I would have liked to see a bit more dynamism in the combat because it was kind of the same sequence yeah. six or seven times, right? Heavy stroke, heavy stroke, knock down, heavy stroke, knock down, heavy stroke, magic, heavy stroke. Like it was, it was, it was a lot of the same. Um, it would have been very cool to see some to see the knight be in danger mm-hmm. during the fight because he was very secure the whole time until the end. I think that's probably uh, and, thematically yeah. like what they're trying yeah. to go for because this is supposed yeah. to be a high level mm-hmm. boss. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, there you go. That's so, fine. Then. So he, but yeah, so overall, overall score like a seven and a half. Yeah, but otherwise, I mean, this was this was very fun. And uh, Elder Scrolls, you've done good. Yeah, you've done good. Well done. <laughs> Genuinely, I, this is you know we're working our way back towards um, believable choreography, and I think this is a uh, I think this is a really good step in that direction. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah. if you guys can think of other stuff that you would like Miles and I to react to and turn a two minute video into like an hour of content. <laughs> <laughs> um by by all means let us know um yeah that's, that's what we're good at is never shutting up yeah uh, so uh, that's your thing <laughs> uh, miles why don't you tell our viewers at home where they can find you uh you can find me on youtube twitter and instagram uh at largely unemployed <laughs> on youtube and i think it's at largely thick on uh, <laughs> uh instagram and twitter <laughs> Uh, let's stick with two C's, by the way. Um, I also have a new channel coming out very soon. I think the first video is going to go up hopefully next month, largely legal. I am an IHL lawyer, uh, international humanitarian law on the sly, and I want to start making fun educational videos in that regard, Geneva Conventions, war crimes, all the good stuff. 
And uh, I hope to see you there. You can find links to all that on my channel, Largely Unemployed. Yeah, links will be in the description. If you if that channel blows up, I get the credit for starting that because I was the one who had you on to talk about the Yes, law. you were. We did War Crimes and Star Wars, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we I'll need have to, to get you on at some point. We, we need well. to do another one of those. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, thanks everyone for coming. And uh, yeah, uh, subscribe, like the channel, share the video. Uh, take care, everybody, and goodbye. Bye-bye.